Hello, it's Michael again. Today we're going to look at how to install WordPress in a cPanel account. WordPress is one of the most popular website building tools or content management systems in the world and a lot of our, our customers come to us and say how do we install it. So we thought we'd put together a nice little video to show you how simple it can be in a cPanel account to install WordPress. WordPress of course is used by 17 or 18 percent of the websites on the internet now, some stats show which, which shows really um, how trusted and how widespread its use is and, and the really great thing about it is that it has such a great community that if you have any questions it's generally very easy to to learn how to use it or to learn how to put things together and put together a really nice WordPress without too much expertise. So the way you'll find to start doing this is going to your cPanel um, account so if you can log in there and then just go to the bottom of the account on this one you'll see Softaculous here which is a a, an installer that we use on our cPanel accounts. Now on some cPanel accounts it may not say Softaculous, it may say installer or auto installer and on some other cPanel accounts it might actually show a WordPress logo which you can click to bring you straight into the WordPress installer area. In this one uh, you would just need to click Softaculous and it'll bring you to the menu page for Softaculous uh, which is like this. Here you can see all the different logos and all the different pieces of software you can use. You can see WordPress here, Magento is another very popular piece of software, Joomla, and you can choose here which ones you'd like to install and go through the process. Um, all the processes are quite similar, um, however most of them are mostly easy to install in a similar way to the way you would install WordPress. So what you just need to do is find the WordPress logo and mouse over it and then just click install and it'll bring you to the options screen where you can choose the options for your WordPress install. There's just a few different options here. Some of them are very important, some of them not so much. So we're just going to go through them and, and point out which ones you really need to, to pay attention to and, and, and make sure you're happy with those settings. The very first um, section here is a software setup section. As you can see here, the first one is uh, whether you want to use HTTP or HTTPS. The two different protocols for accessing the website. If your site has an SSL certificate, you might want to use HTTPS. In the vast majority of cases, you may not have an SSL certificate, so you may want to just leave it as HTTP. If you want to get an SSL certificate, of course, you can come to our website uh, or get in touch with us via support, and we can talk you through the process for that. The next option is to choose the domain that you want to install WordPress into. For most cPanel accounts, there will be just the one domain, and you'll just want to install WordPress into your main domain. If you have multiple domains to add on domains on your cPanel account, you can choose which one you'd like to install your WordPress install into here. For this example, we've just called the site CP user example, so that's what I'm going to leave it as. The next option is the directory option. This is an option which lets you decide which directory on the website you want to install WordPress into. Now, for example, if you had a website that was a e-commerce site or a store and you wanted to add a blog to it and run the blog through WordPress, that's possible. All you would just need to do is come to this option here and type in blog, and that will create a blog. Uh, which will be a WordPress site, which will be yourdomain.com forward slash blog. For this example, we're just going to leave it blank. The next option is the database name. That's something you don't really need to worry about. It's just a randomized name, and you can leave it there as is, or you can change it to something you're happier with. For example, here, the random one is WP116. We're just going to change that to WP, just for the example's sake. The next option is the table prefix, which is also a database section, and it's quite similar in that it's a randomized prefix. Uh, we generally suggest leaving it as is. There's no real reason to change it. If you wanted to change it to WP, you could. In this case, we'll just leave it as FYY just to show you. In the site settings section, it's just uh, the name of the site. For example, uh, we'll just call this one CP user example. Um, you can change this to whatever you like, whatever the name of your website is. And the site description is the same. Uh, we'll just say we'll just call it example okay WordPress install again these are just basic site settings and they can be changed later on the next thing you really want to pay attention to is the admin account area the default admin username will always be admin on the cPanel install however you can change this to whatever you like we generally suggest changing it in this case we'll change it to cPanel example one two three that just makes it a little bit harder and a little bit more secure the password again is similarly, it's just a, a randomized string of, of numbers and characters and, and letters. Um, you can change this to whatever you like, something that's easier to remember. Again, remember that the stronger the better as for every other password. 
something that's worth remembering is that this doesn't have to be the same as your cPanel account information and it doesn't have to be the same as your account with us it can be whatever you like whatever you're happiest with after you're happy with the rest of the settings you can just click install and that will install WordPress into the directory that you've just chosen after you finish the install you'll get this successful installation screen and this will let you know where the WordPress install was installed so for example if this had been installed into a blog subdirectory it would say cp.useyourexample forward slash blog and it'll also give you an important URL which is where you can access the admin area for your WordPress site this will be your domain forward slash WP hyphen admin and you'll just need to remember that and it'll let you get into the back end of your website and where you can manage it and that's something we'll look at now this is your WP admin page so if you follow the link to your WP admin page or else type in your domain forward slash WP hyphen admin it'll bring you to this um, little WordPress login page which is where you can log into your WordPress site and you'll be able to administer your website from there you just use your username and your password that you chose during the installation process you just need to go and click login and it'll bring you to your home page and from there you can edit your website set it up to go and hopefully be very happy creating a website and hosting it with us okay now you should be able to install WordPress and you should be happy about how to get to the WP admin page to be able to administer your site the final thing I just want to run through is a quick introduction to the WordPress files and how it all looks in the file manager and a quick few little hints and tips on how to diagnose any issues that might come up if you just click the file manager as we saw before it'll bring you in to look at your files which should now look like this this is a, a blank WordPress install most of these files you can ignore the one that most people would have to deal with is the wp-config file now this will all be set up to work perfectly from the beginning you don't need to mess with it but some people find things that they want to change and in this example if you wanted to change the database username or the database password this is something you can edit here there are other things you can edit for example the database host name again all of this is set up to work on our servers um, as normal when you install WordPress so it's not something you need to worry about another thing you might be interested in is where all your photos and posts go generally these will be uploaded to that folder wp-content and then uploads and this is currently of course empty because it's a blank WordPress install but this is where, every, where WordPress will keep all your photos and your uploads and everything else you might put on your WordPress site so now you should be ready to go with WordPress if there's any other questions you have or any help you might need in getting your WordPress site working please let us know and we'll be happy to help you